Welcome to Wisconsin DNR's Wild Wisconsin Off the Record Podcast. Information straight from the source. Welcome back to another episode of Wild Wisconsin Off the Record. I'm your host, DNR's Digital Communications Section Chief, Katie Grant. For our final episode of 2020, we wanted to do something a little different. Whether you've been listening for a few episodes or for years, we hope you'll enjoy some of 2020's greatest hits. We start with clips from our episode on the 50th anniversary of Earth Day. Now, this episode is special for two reasons. For starters, the founder of Earth Day was Wisconsin's very own Gaylord Nelson, a former Wisconsin senator and governor. And for this episode, we were actually joined by his daughter, Tia Nelson, who has an impressive resume for her work in environmental advocacy. Listen in as Tia talks about her father's legacy. Greta Thunberg, the 16-year-old Swedish environmental activist, has gained international recognition for her climate strikes. She's also known for having said, adults keep saying we owe it to the young people to give them hope, but I don't want your hope. I don't want you to be hopeful. I want you to panic. I want you to act as if the house is on fire because it is. How does it make you feel to see her and other young activists who are leading the environmentalist fight and do you think they fit with your father's legacy? Yes, they certainly do. It's a really the story of Greta Thunberg is um, a really inspiring one, and it is one that I reflect on quite often for the following reason: it would have been impossible for Greta to imagine when she was sitting alone protesting in front of the Swedish Parliament that that simple act of defiance would launch a global youth movement. Just as Rosa Parks could not have known that that simple act of defiance, saying no to that bus driver when he demanded she move to the back of the bus, she simply quietly said one word, no. It changed the course of history. Just as my father could never have known that the simple idea of setting aside a day to teach on the environment on April 22nd, 1970, would launch the environmental movement, propel the environmental movement forward in these unimaginable ways. Keep in mind, there was no environmental protection agency. Uh, it, uh, it was signed into law by a Republican president, Richard Nixon, um, some months after the first Earth Day. The Clean Air Act, the Clean Water Act, uh, Endangered Species Act, a uh, whole slew of laws that we take for granted today passed that first decade after Earth Day. More environmental laws were passed um, in the decade that followed that first Earth Day than any other time in American history. And so Greta's story is inspiring to me in the way that Rosa Parks' story is inspiring in the way that my father's story is inspiring. These were individuals who had a set of values and cared passionately about something and they took action and they kept at it and they changed the course of history. It demonstrates to me the power of individual action to inspire others to become involved and be a part of the solution. And that, to me, is, is, is incredibly inspiring. Earth Day was successful beyond my father's wildest dreams. He never could have imagined that 20 million people would gather on that day or that 50 years later we would be celebrating uh, his legacy in this way. Right. And I, and, and I, I think that, that people on the 100th anniversary of Earth Day uh, will be saying the same thing about uh, uh, Greta Thunberg and the youth activists around the world who have done exactly what my father had hoped youth would do and youth did do that first Earth Day. It shook up the establishment and made them pay attention. So at Wisconsin DNR, we are embracing Earth Day 365 and encouraging residents to take small steps all year so that taking care of our natural resources isn't just a thing that we think about once a year. Do you have any suggestions for small steps that people can take to make a difference? There's a number of of powerful small steps one can take, from reducing food waste to avoiding single-use plastic 
to uh, composting food scraps, to using energy efficient appliances, to things like funny little fact to know and tell is that something called phantom power, meaning our devices plugged into the wall when we're not using them. Uh, probably about 15% of uh, average home owners' electricity consumption. Simply unplugging those appliances uh, when you're not using them uh, is a way to save energy, and it saves money. Um, so um, being a conscious consumer, uh, being aware of one's impact uh, on the planet, knowing that, you know, one of my favorite quotes from my father is, the economy is a wholly owned subsidiary of the environment, not the other way around. And so um, we have to recognize that our natural resource base is finite um, and that we have to uh, be good stewards of it and that individual action, how we conduct ourselves in our daily life, r really does matter. Um, voting for um, uh, elected officials, whether at the local or state level, who put forward policies that protect our rights to breathe clean air and drink clean water is really important. Outrider.org has a section um, about how you can help. Uh, it includes uh, a way to assess uh, your personal greenhouse gas footprint and uh, things you can do to um, reduce it. So um, get involved, talk about it, take action, and uh, join an organization that suits your particular interests. Catch more from Tia and her passion for the environment on episode 46 titled 50 Years of Earth Day. Sticking with the theme of anniversaries, we also wanted to highlight clips from our episode on the 50th anniversary of the Clean Air Act. We brought in two leading air experts, Gail Good and Brad Pierce, to discuss the impact of clean air here in Wisconsin. They give an explanation of the Clean Air Act, how Wisconsin faces some unique challenges, and ways our state's air quality has improved over the last 50 years. What is the Clean Air Act? The Clean Air Act is one of the most successful pieces of federal legislation that's ever been enacted. You mentioned it was um, put into place 50 years ago, and that's that's true actually at the end of this year, right on December 31st, 1970, is when the Clean Air Act was signed into existence. It's gone through several amendments. Clean Air Act um, was designed really to um, cut down on air pollution while growing the economy. And the benefit of that, the cut down in air pollution, is that it's actually saved lives over the 50 years it's been in existence. When it was enacted, what did it initially mean for residents of Wisconsin and I guess the entire country? From personal experience. Yeah. Uh, so I remember driving, I grew up in Minneapolis and we had family out east. I remember driving through Gary, Indiana on the way out east. In the, in the early 70s. And you could smell Gary, Indiana mm -hmm. at that point, and it was very polluted. And now when you drive through Gary, Indiana, it doesn't smell like pollution anymore, and the air is much better. So, you know, that's from personal experience, seeing that change dramatically over the over my lifetime is pretty amazing. Yeah, and when the act was um, first put in place in the 70s, it really gave us the ability to begin to study air pollution and its effects and how much it was kind of impacting people and kind of the world around them. And then over time, it's given us uh, the ability to, you know, write permits for sources and just understand air quality issues in, in even more detail. Yeah. So we opened up on Instagram and let everyone know that we were going to be doing this episode and asked what sort of questions do our followers have about air quality and just the air in general in Wisconsin. So here's a couple of those questions. Does Wisconsin require vehicle emission testing? Why or why not? Yes, there are some parts of our state that do require vehicle emission testing. Um, those areas are um, Kenosha County, Milwaukee County, Ozaki, Racine, Sheboygan, Washington, and Waukesha counties. Um, the reason that we do that um, is that 
These are areas that have historically uh, violated the ozone standard. They were historically non-attainment areas. Um, some of them still are. Um, in some of them aren't, but when an area is not attaining a standard for some time, when it does eventually attain a standard and we're able to redesignate that area, we want to be able to maintain that good air quality in that area. So um, even some of those counties that are not at this point um, non-attainment, those requirements are in place to make sure that that area can maintain that good air quality and not be in a situation where they're violating a standard again. Yeah. And I think, simply put, part of the reason we've seen such reductions in emissions over the last 50 years is, is kind of twofold. One, we put scrubbers on power plants, and that reduced both uh, sulfur dioxide and nitrogen dioxide emissions. And we put catalytic converters in cars. And if those catalytic converters aren't functioning properly, then we're back where we were in 1970. So those... Uh, the, the emissions testing is to make sure that the technology that's been developed and put in place to reduce emissions is still functioning right. Yeah, makes sense. You've kind of alluded to this already, but why does Door County have some of the worst air quality in Wisconsin at times? Yeah, that's a really good and interesting question. Um, so I mentioned that the lakeshore areas are where we tend to see our higher concentrations of ozone. Door County, right, is um, up at the, the you know, tip of that Door Peninsula, and um, there aren't a lot of sources of air pollution there, so you might not expect to see high concentrations of ozone there um, like you might expect to see in some other parts of the state that do have some more of those um, typical kind of emission sources. Door County is interesting, though. I mentioned um, earlier that um, some of the ozone issue um, is, is really caused by transported pol pollution from, from out of our state. And also um, on those nice summer days where you have that southerly wind. So sometimes if you were able, we, we do actually provide air quality information to the public. So you can kind of see how the, the monitors that we have along the lakeshore that are measuring air quality, you can see how they change over the course of a day. And so sometimes what you see, if you can kind of imagine that southerly wind um, coming up along lakeshore, transporting that pollution and cooking over the lake and kind of working its way up the lakeshore, what we'll see is um, kind of the, the, you'll see the concentrations increase over the day from south to north. And so then eventually towards the end of the day, as that southerly wind has kind of helped push that pollution up along the lakeshore, you'll see Door County and the monitor that's there at Newport State Park, you'll see that monitor show an elevated concentration of ozone, often towards the end of the day, because that southerly wind has just worked, has helped push the pollution up to that point. Want to learn more? Check out episode 48, titled What 50 Years of Clean Air Looks Like for the full story. To finish things off, we wanted to highlight the power of friendship and giving something new a try. Justin Morrissey, an avid hunter, and his mentee, Joey Joaquin, have been friends for close to 10 years. Joey, who happens to have Down syndrome, was interested in trying one of Justin's passions, deer hunting. Justin took us with them on Joey's first deer hunt, and we think it's one of the most memorable segments we've ever had on the show. I was a sophomore in high school when my drama or speech teacher, forensics coach, uh, Roxy Joaquin, in, uh, she approached me and asked me if I would be available to mentor her son, Joey. And so I became Joey's respite care provider for uh, at that point, and I've been that for about 10 years. Joey, why don't you tell us a little bit about who you are? I'm... I'm I'm with Joey. I'm, I know, I go working at my San Cus San Cus Casual Medical Medical, and I I'm working at clean and clean 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 all all busy. So it's like they go to go to um this is his land. I go shot and a deer. <laughs> yep. About they go shot shot his shoulder. This is this get down. <laughs> <laughs> so so what do you what do you like to do for fun joey like what do you like to do for fun besides go hunting now go, i'm gonna go to um hunting well mm. you like to play basketball right yeah you I like play. to go bowling but basketball and 
boning. And Those are big ones. Swimming in the summertime. Yeah. And yeah, so, so swimming. And this is last summer. Mm -hmm. so, like, and you're probably about ready for summer again now yeah. at this point of the year. <laughs> <laughs> so Joey just, what Joey said is uh, he works at St. Croix Central Middle School and he cleans there. He has kind of like a janitorial role at the school um, as part of the staff there. Um, so that's like his big, big job yeah. lately, right? Yeah. Sure. And, uh, and then besides that, you just have a heck of a lot of fun all the time, don't you? Yeah. Like what about your deer? Remember your buck that you got? Yeah. All right, Joey and I are ready to go. What do you think, Joey? It's, it's, it's way to go. That's right, we're ready to go. Yep. So yeah, we just got our stuff ready here at the truck. Yep. I got uh, I got the camera, I got the big gun here. Mm -hmm. Joey's got the 308 on him, and uh, we're gonna stay right by each other the whole way mm -hmm. yep. and uh, get out to the blind. Right Joey, you got him. You got him. You got him, buddy. What do you think, buddy? Good. Dude. Look at that. Joey Joaquin. It's your first buck, buddy. I got I got shot a buck. I got shot a buck. I got it, mom. It's just it's good. It's boy. Tonight, what's the day today? I got a buck. Joey shot a buck. The day doesn't even matter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it is the day that Joey Joaquin got his first deer. Yeah. And it's a nice six pointer, isn't it? Yeah. Right on. Yeah. Good job, buddy. Thank so, you, bud. anyways, uh, and guess what? 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 what What day is Friday this week? This, this fun night. This is my birthday. Number. It is Joey's birthday. This is like your birthday buck, huh? Yes. Yeah, that's a good present, huh? Yeah. So what do you think? <laughs> this is just good. This is just plain old good, isn't it? Yeah, it's good. Right on, buddy. All right. Remember, so you remember you pulled the trigger and oh. we went out there and you had a lot of fun. Remember, we were like dancing in the blind and stuff like that. <laughs> had a lot of fun. Yeah. And we saw the deer out in the food plot. Yeah. And then, and then remember you got your buck. Yeah. So how did you feel about that? This is much, it's much better. You feel felt much better after that, didn't you? Yeah. Just you, it was a life changing experience. Yeah. <laughs> was it very exciting for you, Joey? Yeah. Yeah. So, Justin, you are Joey's friend, but you described that moment to us when we first talked to you as being like watching your own kid get their first buck. What was that experience like for you, and why was it so special? Yeah. So, I think. That experience when Joey got his buck was really special because, I mean, we've developed a relationship over all these years and he is like a brother to me, uh, like a little brother to me. And so just to grow with somebody and not only mentor him, but him mentor me, um, when we both sort of experience that success together, I think it's just as just as good, if not better as me harvesting a deer of my own, um, or just even experience any sort of, you know, big success in, in my life. I mean, it was a really cool moment. And for Joey to express his excitement, like he did in the video, um, you can pretty much see that, like that, that is what makes it awesome is just to see that big smile on Joey's face. And, uh, that's, that's what it's all about. I don't know about you all, but it doesn't matter how many times I listen to this episode, I get chills every time. Give episode 43 titled, It's Your First Buck Buddy, a listen to hear more about their friendship and what it means to Justin to pass on his love of hunting. You've been listening to Wild Wisconsin, a podcast brought to you by the Wisconsin DNR. Now's the time to buy your 2021 park passes. Find your adventure in the new year and gain access to some of the most scenic areas in Wisconsin, including thousands of miles of trails, dozens of beaches, and a wide variety of outdoor recreation opportunities. Learn more and buy yours today at dnr.wi.gov. For more great content, be sure to subscribe to Wild Wisconsin wherever you get your podcasts. Leave us a review or tell us who you'd like to hear from on a future episode. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening.